Hey everybody, welcome to Wine Light Media. I'm Brad and I bring you the story behind Niagara's finest wines. Now if you're a winery and you want some professional video work done, head to my website, winelightmedia.com. And if you're a wine enthusiast, this is your wine of the week. Uh, and so I promised you a show on Syrah. And so I thought I better deliver on that promise. I've got four Syrahs from Niagara sitting here in front of me and I'll, I'll show you some close-ups on those uh, but first I want to talk about Syrah in general as a grape varietal uh, a lot of people don't know Syrah they're not familiar with it uh, they know the you know the regular red grape varietals from Bordeaux like Cabernet Sauvignon Cabernet Franc Merlot they might even know Malbec because Malbec was populated in Argentina uh, and I think it was populated because uh, you know, it was a, a full-bodied red wine at a low price. So people that drank those full-body Napa cabs now could have it at a fraction of the, the price in uh, in Argentina with Malbec. Uh, so price really got people to know Malbec. Now, Syrah, on the other hand, is almost like a specialty wine, in my opinion. And that's why people don't know about it. And the only place you can really find, uh, you know, cheap Syrah is really... Um, the place where it gets its origins. That's uh, France, which is kind of uh, an odd thing. Usually, you know, you'd find examples of Syrah all over the world at a lower price point, like you do other varietals, but it's not really that case because Syrah is not really grown all over the place, first of all. It's a little bit difficult to grow, and sometimes the results, like Pinot Noir, are not the greatest. Um, so you really have to pay close attention to what you're doing uh, in the vineyard and obviously the weather. Um, you have to keep an eye on the weather because this grape varietal doesn't last in uh, harsh climates or cooler climates like here in Niagara. In fact, one of them, the Marinescent uh, Estate Vines, uh, finally um, it got destroyed last winter. It was such a harsh winter. 2015 and 2014 that it just couldn't survive so uh, I don't think Syrah has been put on the map quite yet because people don't really get it they don't know what it is uh, and in my mind it's kind of a bridge wine okay it bridges the light body wines and the full body wines uh, together so it's a medium body wine in my opinion uh, and it's got really neat uh, you know scents and flavors like you'd get in Pinot, but then it's got a bigger, more voluptuous body and sometimes brings in some of those cab flavors like blueberry, blackberry, uh, and, and herbalness, right? It's got a herbal quality to it, but it's also got those meaty notes, I guess, that you'd find, uh, meaty and uh, leafy notes that you'd find in, in, in Pinot Noir. Uh, so really interesting grape varietal. If you've never tried it, I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend you go out and try some Syrahs and you should probably start in France because that's the birthplace of Syrah and um, you really have to understand uh, wines from the Rhone Valley before um, you can understand Syrah. So let's talk about the Rhone Valley, Valley just for a second. So Rhone Valley in France actually is divided into two parts, the northern uh, part and the southern part. The southern part is in the Mediterranean which borders like um, Provence, so the, the Rhone River goes right through that. Um, and uh, the northern part, Corroti, uh, is much, um, much more northern. It has a continental climate, kind of like here in Niagara. So, you know, really cold, harsh winters and um, warm summers. So, two totally different climates in uh, the Rhone Valley that separates the northern and the south and two different distinct wines. So in the south, the Mediterranean, uh, you know, you find wines that have that Mediterranean flair. So they, they have that more that herbal flavor or the, um, those, uh, there's a herb called uh, Garrigue that uh, grows naturally in France. You get, you know, cool lavender um, and violet notes in, in the south of uh, in France. So the main regions there, and, and might I add there, it's not just Syrah that grows in the southern uh, French appellation there in uh, southern Rhone. You can blend in all kinds of varietals. So you get Grenache, um, base wine, Cinso, and, and a whole bunch of others. This is really popular, the blending in Chateau Neuf de Pop. So if you've heard of Chateau Neuf de Pop, you're drinking uh, a blend of Syrah. 
Um, so, uh, other regions in southern France that are popular salad regions of Chateauneuf de Pop would be like uh, Vacaras and one of my favorite, Gigandas. Look those up. Uh, you also get Lirac. Um, so, all these regions uh, in southern France make blends of Syrah. Heading up to northern part of the Rhone Valley, uh, the only red wine varietal that's permitted is Syrah. So you're gonna get a much more uh, precise understanding of Syrah if you drink Northern uh, Rhone Syrah. So they can add white varietals to it though. Uh, so they can add, um, you get this right, Marsan, Roussan, and a Viognier. So it's mostly Viognier. So it just adds that little bit of body in your mouth, that silkiness, it makes it a little more weighty. Um, and then you get all these cool meaty notes, um, you know, cherry, you also get the, you know, the violet and the flowers, uh, but you get more almost Pinot-like flavors in the uh, Northern um, Rhone Valley wine. So our wines here, the Syrahs, more like the Northern, right? Con cool continental climate, warm uh, in the summer. Uh, so that's kind of what our Syrahs are like, the Northern Rhone Valley Syrahs. So I'm gonna show you them here. And uh, let me just sh show you the labels. Big Head, this is Andre Lipinski's new winery and uh, is, this is just a bomb of a wine. So for a uh, cool climate Syrah, he uses the Apassimento style. So he dries some of the grapes, puts them back into the fermentation process. And this comes from a hot year to begin with. 2012 was the vintage and the label's so cool. That's his head, I don't know if you can see it, the outline of his head. So Big Head Syrah. This is by far the most funky, like leafy, tobacco, meaty, um, you know, wine that I could find in Niagara. Just beautiful, all kinds of things going on in this wine. So the most interesting, definitely. Um, this one is, a little leaner, okay, but uh, very close to a Northern Rhone uh, Valley wine that you would uh, you experience. So, again, it's got that herbalness to it, uh, like a Pinot, but bigger. Uh, so it's got some full bodiness, like a Cab. So, it comes from a, a, a cooler vintage, or, or say a classic cool climate vintage. Uh, so not smoking hot like 2012, but uh, Redstone, you know that, that's the, from the makers of Taz. So uh, this is uh, a very premium wine. I definitely uh, suggest you check that out. And heading right along to probably my favorite uh, because it's got such balance. You know, where the big head is kind of, you know, off the charts. Um, this one here really holds itself together. Uh, it's got lushness, bigness, but it's also got balance, so lean, acidity. This is probably the closest to Northern um, Northern Rhone you'll find here in Niagara. It's just beautiful wine. Um, and Derek Burnett, maybe one of the best winemakers we have in Ontario, um, and uh, he's made this wine every year after year, just, Beautiful wine, and he's not there anymore. So you can still head down to Laley and get this wine. It's made by him, Derek Burnett, um, because Laley's gonna has was sold, and um, they're not gonna be producing this grape varietal anymore. So this would be a collector's item. Definitely go get one, uh, and you'll get a good understanding of what Syrah should taste like. Because in my opinion, this is the um, the closest uh, example to, like I said, Northern um, <clears throat> Rhone Valley wine. So this one here. This kind of breaks the mold a little bit. This is the Mary Nissen 2013 Syrah Platinum Series. This is almost more like a, uh, a California uh, Syrah or a Cab, right? Because it's it's big and um, full bodied. It's got like blueberry, blackberry, vanilla, um, and uh, but this one here, the mouth feels more like a Pinot. Again, remember it's like a bridge wine, so it incorporates. Uh, some of the stuff from the cab and some of the stuff from the Pinot. So if you're a texture guy like me and you like wines that are incredibly smooth, then you'll really like this one because it is incredibly smooth. It's like liquid silk going down your mouth. That's it, that's the Syrah show. If you've never had Syrah and you don't know what I'm talking about, you go out and get a couple examples. I would say get one from Northern and Southern France and you'll experience kind of the, the French wine. They're very mineral driven, they almost taste like if you poured water on a hot rock, put your head over it and sucked in, you get that weird steamy hot rock minerality. You get that big time in the uh, the French wines. Uh, and you also get like the, the uh, leafy meaty notes. Uh, they're really interesting wines. Uh, so get get two examples, you know, one from the, the southern, one from the northern. 
get one from Niagara. So you see, you know, if you can compare like I did, is it more southern or more northern? I think it's more northern. Uh, it's uh, based on what I've tasted and our climate, obviously. And then go out and maybe get one from Australia. So in Australia, just a fun fact, Syrah is called Shiraz. Same grape varietal, same DNA, everything. It's just, you know, the Aussies call it a Shiraz. So there, it's super hot climate. <coughs> you can get some cooler climate examples from Victoria and uh, maybe even the Kunawera region in Australia. But for the most part, when you get Shiraz, um, you know, it, it's from the hot areas of uh, Australia. So you're going to experience wines that are more like Napa Valley uh, wines. So big, big um, tannins, big ripe wines, you know, lots of uh, oak in them because they're so, they're so big. So we get the vanilla oak, the blackberry, blueberry, strawberry, cassis, you know, everything. So the big powerhouse wines, right? So, uh, and they lose you from, come from Barosa. But, uh, so get, get one of those. Get four examples, right? Uh, you can even get uh, Washington Valley Syrah in the, from the United States. And the Washingtons, they're very similar to ours, I find. Um, you know, just really nice wines, uh, medium-bodied wines. But some of them go towards the fuller and some of them go towards the lighter. So again, like a bridge wine. Uh, anyway, I'm just rambling on here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, open up the Taz wine for you, or sorry, the Redstone. And I'm going to put it in the canner, let it sit there for a bit, and I'll come back and let you uh, let you see my review, my live tasting. All right. Hope you learned something here, and I'll see you in a bit. So as you can see, the uh, the Syrah in my Syrah glass. Uh, you always got to drink it out of an egg-shaped glass like this. That's a Syrah glass, my friend, so get one. <laughs> uh, so this has been in the decanter for quite some time. And let me tell you, when you pour the wine in here um, and you swirl it around, the first thing that you're going to smell when you put it to your nose is like smoky meats. I love that. And I love that you always get that out of Syrah. You get a meatiness, as, uh, like I was saying. It's very fragrant. Um, and then you get really juicy blueberries and some vanilla notes uh, from the barrel aging. If you've never experienced Syrah, I'm telling you, you just have to. Because, you see, it's got a much deeper color, like I was saying, than what you'd get out of like a Pinot Noir or a Beaujolais. Uh, Burgund Burgundy wines, Burgundian wines, um, much deeper, but uh, it's not entirely um, dark. You can sort of see through the edges of it. You can see my fingers, you know, if I look at through the edge. Um, so it's it's a medium-bodied wine, and that just gives you gives it like a gracefulness. Uh, I haven't drank this wine yet, but I can just tell by looking at it, it looks like it's going to be smooth. But it's the nose that always gets me. It's, you know, it's almost got like a, you know, not a, a barnyard nose, but it's got like some hay on the nose with smoked meats. Definitely a smokiness to it. Uh, and then vanilla and blueberries, or I should say blueberries first, then vanilla. So very nice, very complex nose. Again, drink it out of a beautiful Syrah glass that has like an egg shape uh, to it because the fragrance, uh, since it, it narrows in at the top, it really, really helps you capture the scents on your nose. I love that. This is a uh, Riddell Veritas glass. So you can look that up, grab one of those, drink your Syrah in style. All right, let's try it. Maybe it needs to be decanted a little bit longer, but remember, never judge uh, the wine by your first sip. The first sip is meant to, you know, coat your palate, get it ready for the alcohol, and take another sip. Long finish on this wine. I can still taste it. Look at that smokiness in there. Smoky meats.
Yeah. Beautiful wine. Beautiful. I thought being 2011, this would be ready to go. Uh, but this could still age a good three, four, five years. Um, I'd probably drink it in three years, this. It would just calm the tannins down a little bit more and become more Pinot-like, but still incredibly smooth right now. Uh, it's got super fine tannins, almost like a Barbaresco or a Barolo, uh, the tannin structure. Um, but the flavor has got that, that beautiful, you know, everything on the nose repeats itself on the palate. So that, that smoky barbecue meat, um, blueberry vanilla notes. Really nice Syrah from Niagara. Not cheap though, probably around $40 uh, dollars a bottle, $40, $50 dollars a bottle. So uh, you can get it on sale, you know, sometimes for $35. Um, the Mary Nissen, I think, is $35. Beautiful Syrah. Um, definitely try the Syrahs so, uh, from Niagara. And also try them from, you know, France, like I was saying. So go uh, get one from the Col Roti or from a Hermitage. Now those wines are going to be expensive. Once you go down to the southern uh, part of the Rhone, stay away from Chateau Neuf de Pop because those are expensive. Uh, get to the satellite regions like Lirac, uh, Vacaras, and Gigandas, which is my favorite. So there you have it. Syrah, my friends. A medium-bodied, lush, delicious wine. Probably um, my favorite wine to drink. If I'm not drinking, you know, uh, Pinot Noir or Beaujolais, I want to drink something with just a little more oomph. I go to Syrah. And then if I want to spoil myself with, uh, you know, big-bodied wines, um, you know where to go with those. So that's Cabland. Um, try this Syrah, honestly. If you're a cab drinker, try it. You, you'll like it. Um, and if you're a Pinot fan, you'll also like it. It's one of the only wines that can do that, can bring the two loves together. All right, cheers.